next thing you know, it wouldn't have been 30 seconds, I've got my arm in a hammerlock, an elbow around me throat, there's a bloke here, a tight policeman, he's got a gun pointed to me head, What's the worst situation you have found yourself in in Thailand? You ever been caught up in trouble where you're about to get um, baseball batted by a group of Thai men or? I got arrested one night in Thailand. It's what I thought at one stage would be the, you know, the worst you know, situation as far as uh, you know, breaching the law you know, in, in Thailand. As a, I was walking down the street, uh, as well as, I was very young as well, I, was, I think I was only 28, 29. I picked up this little honey out of Pat Oh, it was a gorgeous little food thing and chatting to it all night long. We were walking down the street and I was pissed. Yeah, young bloke, yeah, you know, the halfway down my back, tight jeans on and the shirt was up, you know, like this is, you know, you know it was the early, you know, late 70s, early 80s or something, you know. Yeah, you know, I got this little fucking honey, he's got a little pink mini skirt on and pink high heels, you know, you know. It was only up to me, you know, it was only up to me, it's a little petite thing, oh, it's sexy little ass, you know, I'm outside. I was walking down the street and you know, I was like a snake, you know. And I've dropped me smokes, you know, and I was like, you know, picking up me smokes, you know. I'm looking at, you know, I'll walk down the street, you know, I'm going, hello. I said, come back here. You know, oi. You know, I said, kept on, she kept on walking. I said, come back here. You know, I put my cigarettes back into me box. I said, uh, have you got a prick? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's a lady boy, I thought, you know, I'd read about him, never seen him, you know. I said, you got a prick? And uh, she said, oh, no, you know, well, well, not anymore, I used to have, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> well, you know, I was a young Aussie bloke in those days, and <coughs> we didn't, I didn't have, um, you know, that much sort of, you know, you know cultural sort of, you know, you know, political correctness in those days, and I've gone snap and belted it right on the chin. Well, the next thing you know, it's a starfish. And you know the little drag in between Pat Pong 1 and Pat Pong 3, you know, King's Castle's just on the corner. It was, it was down there, walking down the street there. Some cunt pulled out a snake one day. He said, oh, look at the fucking snake. You know, big green snake. He said, have a look at that. Pulled out the snake, snapped it on the ground, put his snake back in the box. They all cried. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. Anyway, I've, I've you know, popped this thing on the fucking chin and it's a starfish on the ground, you know. Yeah, I'm looking around, you know, I'm sort of, you know, kicking it, you know, I was, I was half by conscious. And, uh, and, uh, next thing you know, it wouldn't have been 30 seconds, I've got my arm in a hammerlock, an elbow around me throat, there's a bloke here, a tight policeman, he's got a gun pointed to me head, and there's two other tight policemen over here, and there's a bloke over here, he's got that much bird shit, on his shoulder, you know, like, like, you know, he's got that much decoration, you know, you had no idea. And the first thing this senior officer said to me, you've just killed a Thai citizen. What? And I've gone, no, 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 it's still alive. It's, it's sort of great. I said, I haven't killed it, you know. And well, they all marched off, you know, you know, down, down the street and, you know, gone into the police house at the end of the street at Pat Pong and, you know, and thrown into this fucking room up against the fucking wall and, you know, left there to sit, you know, by myself for 30 minutes with no attendance from anyway. Anyway, after about half an hour, I was sitting in this room, you know, the, this small little fucking room was, the, the, the cop has walked in and uh, uh, he said, you've, you've, you've killed a toast. He said, no, I haven't, it's not dead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then uh, I said to him, may I please explain, sir? But I then bowed, you know, to him and spoke to him in Thai and I explained to him, I said, look, I said, I'm, you know, I was being fluent Thai, uh, I'd, I'd been learning Thai and I was speaking in Thai to him. And I said, look, excuse me, sir. I said, I said, I've been working very hard in Australia. I said, I'm married to a Thai woman. I said, she's been saving up hard money that I've been giving her, you know, while I've been working 
and you know, because I've working too hard, she saved up for a holiday, so I come back to you know Thailand and have a week's holiday by myself. I've come out to Pat Prong, this is my first night in Pat Prong, and I've picked up this thing. Now what would you do if you, you know, your wife had done that for you if you were living in Australia? Your Thai wife had done that for you and you're living in Australia and you came back and pick up a toy. You know, I snapped. I'm terribly sorry, you know. And the Thai policeman says, Hmm, I understand. And then he asked me, you know, do you drink? I said, yes. You know, and then we kicked off from there. And, but that's another story. Continue. Roll with it a little bit more. Oh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, you I drink. said, yes, I do. At that stage, um, he said, he, he said, uh, uh, Todd Cart, song the team. He said, excuse me, you know, I'll give me two minutes. And I, I, he opened up the door and he said to his boy, he said, go get us uh, cigarettes and whiskey. So the Thai bloke came back you know, very shortly with a couple of bottles of Macon and, and some Thai cigarettes. And, you know, we started drinking, you know, buckets of ice and water and we started to drink, you know, w with each other. And he asked me what was my lot in life and what I did and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we were talking and, we were, and uh, I offered him actually a... I was smoking Dunhill International Red at the time when he offered me the Thai cigarettes, which actually the Thai cigarettes I smoked you know, at the time, but I offered him a Dunhill International Red and you know, he was very wrapped with that and uh, so it sort of broke the ice and we you know, kicked off from there. But he's now a very dear friend of mine and I, I've known him from that day to this and see him every time I go to Thailand. And we always eat together and we draw the high life of, a, of Pat Pong together when he's not working. But they all know him. And it's, it's great to go out with him in, in Patpo and we, we do have a good time. Sounds like a good plan. What are your thoughts on buying property in Thailand? Once upon a time, two or three years ago, I was in Pattaya. I put a deposit down on a two-bedroom condominium. Yes. Beautiful location. Yes. And I um, got advice from my father and a few other people whose um, opinion I respect and pulled out on the deal. I lost about 50,000 baht. A two bedroom condominium. In Pattaya, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, um, what it was, was great that? location. In, in, great location. In a major hotel or? I was in a condominium. How, how far away from walking street? Three and a half minute walk. Three and a half Soy 15, Soy second 15. road. Second road back, okay, Soy 15. And how, Not how, very how, how, and you lost 50 grand. I lost uh, 50,000 baht deposit, yeah. And how much was the residence worth? Oh, it was 5.4 million baht, which 5. at the time was about 192,000. 200 Australian. grand? Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Yeah, they gave you good advice. Pull out on that one. Good or not? That's too expensive on a condominium. In, I know. did do my research, and um, I believe that was a fair price for market value. And in that for market location, value for a Westerner, maybe, but it was the best in the you area. If you buy Thai prices, and you were to live, say, ten kilometres out from this uh, was in the heart. This yeah, well, was okay, right this in is heart. in the heart. But say, if you were to live ten kilometres out, you could have bought. Yourself, I know. Yeah, you know, a, a three-bedroom, brand new, Western-style house. house yeah. You know, up on stilts of you know, Western-style kitchen and bathroom. Yep. For a, a, a couple of million, well, less than half the price. Yeah, you're right. So you know, well, okay, you're paying for that convenience, but for two hundred thousand dollars, how many years ago? Two, two or three. A lot of money. Two to years pay, ago, actually. A lot of money to pay for joining, but I went on a. It was in the heart. It was right smack bang. Once upon a time, you could buy a Center bar in Pattaya, condominium. Center and, and condominium. you could have had your virtually choice of bars, you know, you, you, to buy. You, you could have bought a bar for... Uh, oh, no, it was Pattaya uh, Garden, sorry. Uh, yeah, right, Ant. I think. You could have no, bought a bar, I, I think it was... City Garden, that's it. It wasn't 100 grand, I don't think it was 100 grand, I don't think it was that much. But you, you couldn't buy a bar in, in you know, <clears throat> you know Pat Pong for you know, less than millions nowadays. Yeah. That brings me to my next question, John. What are your thoughts on buying a bar in Thailand? Don't. Unless you've got a Thai wife and she'll still rip you off. Don't. As you, simple you, as that. Don't, 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 don't think you're going to compete with the Thais in business in their own <coughs> turf. You know, like, you know that, that's pretty arrogant of anyone thinking you want to try and make money out of Thais. 
you know, or, or on their own ground, really. You know, like, you know, they're experts at making money. You know, they're the only people that can smile, you know, you know smile at you and you, you think they're nice and they're beautiful and they're, and they're taking money, you know, and one person's taking out money out of your pocket directly, you know, because you're giving it to them. And when you put your wallet back, you know, the, the person in the bus behind you is, you know, you know, cutting your back trousers so your wallet falls out and he steals your wallet. You know, and they're all working together. They all know what's going on. Yeah, but no one's chirping up, you know. You know. It's all a big grand act Shakespearean play every night that goes on in Bangkok. It's only when you become aware of it, you know, you, you, you realise, you know, uh, you know, the irony of the exercise. I Next made the, question. Sorry? Next question. Okay, I made the fatal error once of buying a bar girl a $500 gold ring. Have you ever bought a bar girl gold or given her a very expensive gift? Uh... A long time. I bought a girl a very expensive gift in Tokyo many years ago, but a Japanese girl. Yeah, a Japanese girl. She wasn't a Thai girl. I bought her an extremely expensive you know, gift. You know, was, I think it was eighteen thousand dollars. You know, you know, I bought bought her, but um, what was that? What did you buy? Gold, actually. Gold. It was Japanese gold. Yeah, you know, she yeah you know, well, was it was eighteen carat from Hong Kong, but um, I paid an enormous amount of money with that with commercial prices. But next time back time I came back and saw her, I bought a gold from from Thailand, which she appreciated a lot better and paid a quarter of the price, and I think I got twice the quantity of gold in content. That's the greatest buyer of Thailand gold. Always has been, always will be. Which city in Thailand has the most beautiful girls? Pattaya. Bangkok or Phuket? Bangkok. Ask anyone. Why do you say that? Ask, anyone. ask a taxi driver in There's Bangkok. There's some beautiful girls in Pattaya. Beautiful. Ask a taxi driver where the most beautiful women in the world. Or ask most tourists, you know, you know, you know who are in Bangkok. You know, where are the most beautiful women in the world? And they will say Bangkok. But if you ask a Thai man, where are the most beautiful women in the world? You know, they will say... Um, Puying Lao Vientian, you know, the women from Vientian in Laos. And um, I went to Vientian and I, I found that to be true, but uh, they're not as, you know, they're a lot more conservative in Vientian than what they are in Bangkok. You know, they don't ply their trade in Vientian as they do in Bangkok. I'll be visiting there very shortly. I can't wait. My first wife was, uh, her mother was from Vientian, she was born in Vientian. It had a Thai father. Pardon me. In Bangkok nightlife scene, can you please rate in order one to three? Nana Plaza, Pat Pong, Soy Cowboy. Uh, it's a good question. A lot of people you know, ask that, but uh, I, I go uh, Pat Pong, uh, Soy Cowboy, uh, Nana, Nana Plaza. A lot of Thai blokes they'll go to. Um, if they go out, they'll go to a soy cowboy because you'll find sometimes a, a lot of younger girls, you know, a lot of younger, prettier you know, girls will, will go to you know, soy cowboy. You know, possibly you know, their first job in Bangkok or if they're, you know, they're, uh, they're younger, you know, if not, they'll go to a um, Nana, you know, soy Nana or Nana Plaza, you know, as it's called. But um, to go to Pat Pong, you know, like it's uh, Pat Pong's not for young players. You know, you know it's, in my opinion, it's you know it's a step up the ladder. You know, like it's a lot more aggressive in Pat Graham, Pat Pong, the marketing than, than what it is in Nana or 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 Soy Cowboy. Okay, Pattaya, Bangkok, or Phuket. Bang what well, is an order? You know, in order, please. One to three. Ba Bangkok. Personal preference, of course. Bangkok, uh, Phuket. Sorry, Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket. You know, like the chillers who can't get a job in Bangkok, they they go to Pattaya. If they can't get a job in, you know, they can't get a job in Pattaya. They go to Phuket. If they can't get a job in Phuket. They all end up with, you know, in Patong Beach with all the Aussie honeymooners. You know, like, what? You know, like. <laughs> 
Now, Fetty, you know, we'll all go to a honeymoon to Phuket. Yeah, we'll go to Batong Beach. Why would you want to take your wife on a honeymoon to Batong Beach? You'd need your head red, wouldn't you? Yeah, God. That happens. The honeymoon oil. That's not Thailand anyway. I went to a wedding once in Phuket. Aussie wedding, was it? My cousin, yes. Oh, grouse. What would you want to do? Yeah, on the yeah. beach? Oh, cheap, cheap wedding. Grouse wedding on the beach. Romantic. You know, it was everyone on off the tie shields and the surf. Giving you head jobs, wouldn't you? <laughs> Something along those lines, John. Yeah, right, oh, sorry, we'll cut that bit. <laughs> Somnom na. Bad luck. I hear know. that a lot. What's the time meaning <coughs> of that? Oh, the time. Somnom na. It's a term used in ironing, saying, well, bad luck, you know. You know Give you... us an example. Somnom na. I'll say if someone's being, you know, foolish and you know they have a you know you know they're doing something which you know they think they're good or something you know and uh oh well I'll give an example an Australian example you know when Tony Abbott you know got uh kicked out of you know office by Malcolm Turnbull recently you know my Thai wife turned around to me and said Somnum, somnum, nah, you know, well, bad luck, Tony, you know, like, uh, you know, you deserve it or whatever, you know, but it's a, it's a term, you know, in meaning, well, you know, it, it, it's karma, you know, in relation to karma, you, you, you got what you deserve back. Another thing I hear a lot is Thai people, or about Thai people, is um, saving face, and Thai people don't like to lose face. Can you please explain that? Oh, yes, they do. It's still very honourable with regards to hierarchy of age. And, uh, you know, if a girl in the street meets you know, another girl and she might be 23 and another one's 22, you know, they'll, they'll set a, an order of hierarchy in it. You know, when exactly were you were born, you know, and to establish, you know, who refers to each other as, you know, P, you know, which is a, a senior person. You know, you know every, everyone has their, you know, their slot in their space. You know, in life, in, in Thai society. So if a Thai person was to lose face, what would that mean? Or save face? It, 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 How would face. they go about saving face? It's not so much a question of saving face. I think it's more of a, a Western idea, which we use terminology of concept in more relation to a, a Chinese <laughs> culture. You know, the Thais are more inclined, I've found, to... Uh, be quiet and respectful in their manner and and uh, have good manners and uh, consider others and uh, be respectful of others you know for what their experience is and they make that in relation to age so a senior person is going to certainly gain a lot more respect than what a, you know, a young five-year-old child is all right john here's one for you I've sat in bars and I've met blokes personally. I've read internet forums where guys have said, lady boys give the best blowjobs. If a mate of yours was to get sucked off by a lady boy, is he gay? No, I've had a mate of mine that's been sucked off by a lady boy. In fact, he's still in love with her. He, he's got his picture, he's got it up over his bed. To be honest, yeah, he's got it, he's, oh, he reckons he's beautiful. Yeah, but I haven't been gay to tell him it's you know, a lady boy, but you know, he's... Been at a few times. Well, he doesn't know. He can't be gay. Well, he doesn't know, but, you know, like, you know, I don't want to, you know, break his heart. Maybe he does know. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. You know, like, uh, I said, I'll show this to a few Thai chicks when you get to a, back to Australia. He had pictures of her. You know, well, uh, they didn't pass comment. They said, oh, she's beautiful, but, you know, like, they didn't want to break his heart either. But, you know, like, I think he's still in love with it, you know, like... Well, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. You you, you wouldn't know it was a bloke unless. Well, he doesn't. But was, you know, I picked it a mile off. You know, it was a bloke. But he was having a good time. And I thought, well, let him go. And you know, I, I couldn't say anything the next morning, could I? He was happy. He was smiling. So there's a good chance he's getting. But he's not gay. He's not gay by any stretch of imagination. I bet married men, they love nothing more than going down to soy six potato, getting sucked off by a lady boy. They consider mm. themselves straight. Oh, okay, so if your mate's getting sucked off by a lady boy, there's a good chance he's fucking them or they're fucking him. 
boy. So is fucking Lady Boys gay? It's a very contentious question. It gets spoken about a lot on the internet forums. Is, is fucking Lady Boys gay? Well, they need more movable muscles in an arsehole than what there is in a cunt, isn't there? So, um... Uh, is Lady <clears throat> Boy gay? Well, is are fucking, you... Are is you, fucking Lady Boys gay? I've actually got a video up. Check it out. It's called, Is Having Sex With Lady Boys Gay? Um, there's a lot of great comments. But, um... I, I respect uh, your opinion, John, so that's why I'm asking you the question. Well... Is fucking Lady Boys well, gay? Well, well, okay, let's take the premise that it is gay. It, 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 it is gay, go to the fact a lady boy is gay. Um, that, we're taking that perspective, perspective from a Westerner. In Thailand, being a lady boy, it, it is not necessarily a question of being gay. You know, lady boys are regarded and respected within their own right within Thai culture because they have both the yin and the yang. They have the male and the female in them. So fundamentally in Thai culture, lady boys hold their own uh, self place as far as re respect and, and, and often esteem. Um, some Thai men prefer lady boys, many don't. Um, they are a, a novelty for for Westerners because their their beauty is, you know, after surgery and and after cosmetic surgery and uh, medications which they take, um, it uh, they become you know very you know can become very highly feminine in their appearance, you know which which you know bluffs the you know the average bloke. And I, I, from the lady boys I have met, now I've met many. You know, I have a dear friend who was the top lady boy in Bataya for many, many years. You know, when uh, Tiffany's first kicked off, you know, he was the leading lady boy, and uh, he, he doesn't look anything like he used to nowadays. You know, like I sit next to him, I said, "Oh, how things are changing." He's still got thirty-eight double D tits, though. His tits are still pretty good, but fucking, he's <laughs> he's got stubble and he's fucking, oh. you know, and he's. Ah. He's, he's he's bald red than me and you know and uh, he's he's fat you know he's big he's a lot big big bloke and he's been eating a lot and you know and uh, and but he wears lovely clothes and he's very effeminate in his manner you know and you know he wears lovely lace t-shirts and lace trousers and he plays up as the camp and all that but he's my mate you know I've, you know I've, you know we have a mutual interest in common but it's, I've I've never slept with him or fucked him he's just you know. You know, uh, good for a chat. Oh, more than the chat we do in Thailand. We we like a drink and a, you know play the games in Thailand. He's he's the leading uh, uh, bar uh, manager in in Patpong actually has been for years and always will be. He's brilliant. Any last words you want to leave with the viewers about Thailand? Oh, I could speak. I could speak for years on Thailand, you know, like, and that's why I've got you on the channel, John. I I'm, love I'm, listening to you talk about Thailand. Thanks very much. If it's not just fun. me, my viewers, I'm sure they're going to enjoy this. I hope so. I hope so. I, I love the place, and you know, I, we I, share I, a passion. Yeah. Some people they don't understand. It gets in your blood, man. This place is addictive. I was saying to Archie Luxury the other day. We, you know, we're running a tour in. You know, you know, Thailand, uh, you know, recently, I was saying to Archie the other day, I said, uh, I said, look, you're going to have to, I might change a little bit when I go back to Thailand because, you know, after I'm there about you know, a day or so, I, I forget to think as a Westerner and I start to think as a Thai. And I don't respond in English, I speak in Thai because, you know, that's what I often do at home, you know, with my wife because it's easier because I understand what she's saying and makes it easier on her, but... Uh, you know, I'm kind of conscious of the language and, and I hear every word and I, I, I leave my ears open. I, I, I use my ears nowadays and, you know, what I, I, I ever use my eyes. You know, like what I see in Thailand now, I've seen a million times. But what I hear is not necessarily what I've heard before. 
So thank you very much for the, you know, you know, this interview, you know, you know, Dead Frank. It's you know, much you know, appreciated, but you know, I'd love to share you know, you know, more experiences with you, you know, again, if you wish. That sounds great to me, John. Good on you, mate. Good on you. I think we'll wrap that up here, John. On the subject of Thailand, when you talk, I listen. It's been an absolute honour and a privilege to have you sit down and discuss Thailand with me on my channel. I thank you for the time. Hopefully one day we'll catch up in Bangkok for a few singers. That'd be great. Ladies and gentlemen, John Sucklehammer. Thanks, mate. Good on you. Here you go, right?